In this video, we're going to look at the final conic section curve, and that's the hyperbola. So the general form of the equation for one of these looks very similar to that of the ellipse. So it starts with x squared over a squared, and then we have take away y squared over b squared equals 1. So it's identical to the equation of the ellipse, apart from this is a minus rather than a plus. Now, we'd be interested to know right, what this graph really looks like. So the first thing you might do is try and find out where it crosses the x and y axes. So if we put in x equals 0, then that term's gone and we get left with this. But the problem there is that then we've got y squared over b squared would have to be equal to negative 1. Okay? But y squared over b squared is going to be positive. There's no way that that can be minus 1 with y and b both being real numbers. And so that can't happen. And so the curve cannot cross the y-axis. So the curve does not cross y-axis. Okay, how about when y is 0? We're going to have any luck there. So when y is 0, we've got x squared over a squared equals 1. That seems okay. So I can multiply it by the a squared. And so, square rooting both sides, x must be equal to plus or minus a. And so we've got these two points of intersection with the x-axis, okay? So, so far, the graph that we have looks like this. We know that it crosses the x-axis at minus a and positive a, okay? That's what we know so far. But it doesn't cross the y-axis. Right, now, taking a look at this, if we rearrange this to get x squared over a squared is equal to 1 plus y squared over b squared, then if we consider what happens when both x and y get very large, either in the positive or negative direction, okay, uh, because we'd have the same situation, wouldn't we? Because you're squaring both of them. So as x and y tend to infinity and get larger and larger and larger, the a squared and b squared, remember, they stay fixed. They're staying the same. So this value and this value will get larger and larger and larger. The 1 will dip into insignificance. And so what we'll get is that x squared over a squared will become approximately y squared over b squared, okay? They will uh, become close, get closer and closer and closer to one another. So, if I multiply up by the b squared and rewrite this as y squared is approximately b squared over a squared x squared, then I can square root both sides and say y will be approximately plus or minus b over a times x. So that's what's happening as x gets larger and larger and larger in either the positive or ne uh, x and y get larger and larger and larger in the positive or negative direction. So I could go put plus or minus infinity there. Okay. So this is telling you the asymptotes of the curve. So y equals plus or minus b over a x are asymptotes. So they are oblique asymptotes. And so if I draw them onto my graph, let's put one there. And of course, um, we're going to have two because the plus or minus b over a. Okay, so you look something like that. And so with the curve 
crossing through A and minus A and tending towards those uh, diagonal lines. Oh, that's, that's not going very well. Let me start from there. We must have a curve that looks something like this. OK, and so that is what this will look like. So this is a hyperbola centred at the origin um, with crossing through the x-axis at minus a and positive a with asymptotes y equals plus or minus b over ax. OK, and so this is the general form of a hyperbola. Now, um, you can, so when you extend this, if you were to reflect it in uh, the y equals x line, OK, then what you would end up with is y squared over a squared take away x squared over b squared equals 1. OK, so we'll, we'll deal with that um, later on. And you're going to get a graph that looks like this. So it'll be up there and down there. OK. Now, there is a particular type of... Um, of hyperbola that we do need to be aware of, and that is a hyperbola that we all uh, we've all met before, and that's y equals one over x. Okay, so let me well I can just try and put it in here. Let's see if I can put it there. So we say that a hyperbola. with the x and y axes as asymptotes. OK, so if the x and y axes are the asymptotes, OK, then we have what's referred to as a rectangular hyperbola. OK, so a rectangular hyperbola includes something like y equals 1 over x. Uh, in fact, y equals um, like c over x would be its common form, which you can then multiply up by the x and write it in this alternative form here. So x, y equals c. Um, I think sometimes uh, people write it as c squared, OK? So x, y equals c squared um, as a general form um, is the general form of a rectangular hyperbola. So it has the asymptotes of the x and y axes, OK? So example of that would be... x, y equals 4, for example, which is y is equal to 4 over x. And so your graph looks like this. OK, so it has the, as the asymptotes at the x and y axis, which are at right angles to one another. Hence, you have that title of rectangular hyperbola.